The thing about using software, especially software as deep as something like Studio One, is there are typically lots of different ways to do a thing that you want to do. There's another piece of software I use for taking notes, um, managing my life, that is actually, it's like a 40-year-old piece of software. But it's still maintained today, and it's got a lot of features. If there's something I want to do in that software, I can probably typically find five different ways to do it, if not more, and each has its pros and cons. So what I want to show you in Studio One today is, especially if you've been using it for a long time, there are sometimes new features that we roll out that you may not have noticed or have ignored that will make your workflow easier. So I'm going to show you one of those specifically for me. So here's a song I was mixing yesterday. I'm going to focus specifically on this track here. I'll make it yellow so we can see it a little more clearly. So this is a, it's kind of a lead guitar track. So it's playing little riffs throughout the song, little lead parts. And I noticed as I was mixing that in the different sections, it was getting too loud in some sections and too quiet in others. And I wanted to adjust that volume without having to resort to volume automation. Because volume automation, I did a video on this recently, it kind of locks you in, right? Once I write any volume automation on the fader, for example, I now cannot move that fader. Right? If I go just move the fader, it'll jump right back to its saved, pre-saved volume point because that automation extends the life of the song. So I really, for something like this, I just want to do big chunk moves to just get this to be an even volume throughout without having to do any automation so I can still move the fader as much as I want to get the overall level kind of where I want it. So the way I've done this forever is this right here. I will take the piece of audio, I will chop it up into sections, and I will use this little handle right here to adjust the volume up and down, or I'll use my keyboard shortcut. I've got set to, let me show you. Uh, if you come to keyboard shortcuts, so under general keyboard shortcuts, and you search for plus three, you'll find a increase volume <clears throat> plus 3 dB macro. I've got that set to equals, which is the same as the plus sign on my keyboard. And then minus three, I have set to the minus sign on my keyboard. So right next to the backspace, those two buttons, I can go boop -doo -boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -doo -boo and adjust the volume of a specific <clears throat> region up or down by three decibels. So that's, that's fun. That's handy. You can always drag it as well. Um, so I've been doing that for years. And that's a really fun and effective workflow. Obviously, I still do it. But a question came up somebody was watching me mix and said, well, aren't there other ways that you could do this, what you're doing right here? And the answer is yes. But first, let me show you how I do this and actually a feature that maybe I know I haven't talked about in a long time. If you look up in the top of your window here, in the arrange window, you'll see you've got all these different tools. And the way you can switch between them is just by coming up and clicking on them. So the, the I don't use these tools very often. This one's for adjusting like bend markers. This is, I think, a mute tool. Um, I don't, this is that transform tool that I honestly don't use as much, the eraser tool. Um, but the ones I use a lot are these three right here. So this is just the select tool. This is the, I always forget the name, the range tool that lets me select a range. And then this is the cut tool that lets me chop up audio into pieces. So you can see I just chopped this piece of audio up into different pieces. Um, and I like to use those a lot, especially with this workflow. Um, but I don't like to come up here and push the button every time I want to change it. Uh, what you may not know, you see how it says split tool three? These are mapped to the numbers on my keyboard. So if I press one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, they're actually all mapped out there. So I can keep my right hand on the mouse and I can switch between tools this way. That's actually not the way I use it either. If you press one on the keyboard and just keep pressing it over and over, you'll notice that little underline thing moves. So one is the shortcut for the main tool, the arrow tool. And then if we select this, then that means it's the arrow tool when I'm on the top half of a region or the bottom half of a region, and it becomes the range tool when I'm on the top half. So here I can click and drag. Up here, if I click and drag, it selects, right? So that's this this cute little handle bracket thing here turns on both of those so it kind of knows based on where the mouse is what it's what uh, what mode it's in but even with those two selected when I press one over and over I can see this kind of sub thing moving around that is kind of the alternate tool and what that means is whichever one of these I have selected when I when I hold down and as soon as I say it, I'm forgetting which one it is. When I hold down, I believe it's Command on the Mac. Yes. When I hold down Command on the Mac, Control on the PC, it will just temporarily change my tool to 
whatever I have selected up there. So I usually have it set to the split tool so that when I'm in here working and I want to take this section and adjust it, one of the ways I can do that is say, oh, this note's a little too loud. I can just go boop, boop, and then I can come in here and I can go up and down or I can just drag this where I want it to go. Um, you can also do it just in the name of things being having multiple ways to multiple ways to do things. I could select it using this range tool and then press plus and minus to adjust it. Um, I could select it like this and then double click on it and that separates it that I can then adjust it. Um, and then I can, like I said, I can use the split tool to split them first, then select it and adjust it. So there are a lot of ways to just accomplish the same thing, which is just adjusting the, the clip level of individual clips. Now, is there another way to do this that's even easier? I don't know if it's easier, but it's worth talking about. If you don't know about this, I want to show it to you. So this is the idea of the clip gain envelope. This is something we rolled out in version five, I believe. If I right click on this event and I come look, I'll see this checkbox right here. If I turn that on, you'll notice the only thing that changes is there's now a horizontal line going across this event. And that horizontal line is something I can now manipulate. So it looks a lot like volume automation, except instead of it applying to the fader, it's applying to the actual underlying audio. So if I click here, for example, and then I click another one and I drag it, it's adjusting everything before that point up and down based on how I drag it. So I could have different sections of audio be different levels just by doing this. Same thing here. This, uh, let's say this section needs to be louder, but then I want this section to be quieter. I can do that. I can still do things like select this section and then hover over the top. It becomes a trim tool where I can trim this up and down and it's all kind of using these little data points these little nodes to do that the cool thing about this that that makes this different from just selecting them and adjusting the volume up and down is that we can also have like curves to it so if i wanted this to say i don't know like i want it to kind of fade up like this i could do that i could set it like this so it slowly fades in and if i have a point that i don't want i just double click it and it goes away and we can move around as much as we want. So this is called clip gain envelopes, and this happens independently of what's happening in volume automation. So you could technically have clip gain, and then you could also come in and do this number, right, on top of the clip gain. Then you could have automation on the fader at the end. There are so many ways to adjust the volume, and there are reasons to do both. So the, what's the main reason for doing this before it ever hits the fader? Mainly for me, I wanna get a nice balanced level from my track from start to finish. Um, so that when it hits my compressor, when it hits the EQ, whatever other processing is there, it's hitting it at a pretty consistent volume. Doesn't mean I need it to be the same. I just kinda wanna do big macro level changes here so that I can then not have to worry about doing quite as much volume automation later and I can focus on other things in the mix. So if you've never used this feature, um, or if you're not in the custom of watching the videos here on this channel from both Gregor and myself and other folks on the Personas team, um, it is worth doing because you may discover, perhaps you've been doing this the old way where you just chop things up and you're doing this thing, and you may discover that using that clip gain envelope requires fewer clicks and you can get the job done a lot easier and a lot more kind of customizable without having a bunch of different events in your timeline. That's kind of the bigger thing. I like that this can be just one whole event with a bunch of gain envelope movements versus being um, a bunch of separated regions or events that kind of clutter up. Just visually, it kind of clutters things up. Also, you can turn off the clip gain envelope on and off so you can kind of see uh, if it's helping or not without having to like go in and delete things and undo a bunch of things. So there you go. This is the clip gain envelope. I know it's not a new feature, but for everyone, every feature is new if you've never seen it before. Um, and we don't expect you to have read the entire manual and know every single feature. So I hope this one helps you on your next editing session. Thanks for watching. My name is Joe Gilder. I'll see you in the next one.